Today I want to show you a new VEX V5 holonomic drive base that I designed which is part Mechanum drive and part Kiwi drive. I call it the Y drive and I'll explain why this drivetrain might just bring back holonomic drives to the VEX V5 competition. G'day, I'm Mr. Code. Holonomic drives are drivetrains that are designed to move in any direction, including sideways, without having to turn the robot. And this makes holonomic drives exceptionally well suited for robotics competitions where agility and maneuverability is required to score points. And robots with holonomic drives can move in unpredictable ways, forcing the opponent to rethink their defensive gameplay because the robot is so slippery and hard to pin down. And these robots are also better suited for scoring because they are able to adjust their position without having to make multiple turns. In VEX V5, the main holonomic drive designs are either the Mechanum drive or the X drive, both of which have strengths and weaknesses. The X-Drive is lighter and faster, but because the omnidirectional wheels need to be installed at an angle, it also takes up valuable space on the robot, which can limit how teams can fit in more subsystems. The Mechanum Drive, on the other hand, has a square chassis, which is much more space efficient, but it is also significantly heavier due to the weight of the Mechanum wheels, which can slow the robot down. However, both of these drives suffer from a major problem in the latest VEX V5 game, which is that they both use four motors when most competitive robots use six motors for the drivetrain. And of course we can double up on the motors and make an eight motor X drive or a Mechanum drive, but then there will be no more motors for other subsystems. And this means that there is a significant power disadvantage for robots that decide to use a holonomic drive when it comes to pushing power on the field. Now my goal was to design a holonomic drive that uses six motors to make them more feasible in a VEX V5 game. And that meant changing the four motor groups down to three motor groups. And there is already a design for a triangular drive. It's called a Kiwi drive. Theoretically, you can put two motors on each of the three wheel groups and then have a six motor holonomic drive. However, the Kiwi drive is even more difficult to work with than an X drive because the triangular shape of the chassis is extremely space inefficient and working with triangles is, is just a pain. So I needed to create a Kiwi drive with a square base and that's how I came up with the Y drive. It has two Mechanum wheels up front and an omnidirectional wheel in the back. And you can see in this driving test that this funny wheel combination definitely works. And although it is just a three motor prototype, some teams might be able to scale it up with six motors and different wheel combinations to make it even more feasible in competition. Now I spent a lot of time researching and editing these videos together. So if you find this video tutorial helpful, then please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It is your support that lets me continue making VEX videos. So I thank you in advance. Let's get to the coding. Now to get started, we will need to add our motor groups. So first of all, uh, I'm using single motors, but like I said, this is designed for a six motor holonomic drive. So you would want to create a motor group if you want to pair up your motors. Uh, but for, for this particular example, this particular build, I'm going to use a single motor. So my left motor is on port one, left mechanum. Whoop. And then um, I am spinning anti-clockwise to go forward. So I go, that's left mechanum. And then number two, this is for my right mechanum. And we reverse the spin because we are uh, spinning clockwise to go forward. And then we need an omni motor drive. So for this, we're going to go um, <clears throat> uh, like this. And then we're going to spin, when we spin, Anti-clockwise, we're spinning to the left, and when we're spinning uh, clockwise, we're spinning to the right. Okay, and then finally, we need to add a controller. Okay, so this is your device setup for this build. Now, it's really important to um, understand 
uh, why we are doing what we're doing. The, the key is that we want a six motor drive. Uh, but for this example, we are only using single motors. I'm just showing you how to code it so that you can scale it up uh, for your team. All right, so when program starts, what we're going to do is we're going to have a forever loop like this. And then we're going to um, set the left wheel rotation. Whoops. Spin the left wheel position. Uh, uh, sorry, velocity. <laughs> what am I talking about? All right. <clears throat> so I want my um, my controller when I move up on the left stick to move forward. Okay. So that means that my uh, my number three axis on the controller. You can see on the controller there are tiny little numbers. The up and down axis for the left stick is the number three position. So we're going to set the velocity of my left wheel to simply be the, um, the controller setting, the controller position three. That means that when I move forward, when it goes all the way up to 100%, then it spins my left wheel to 100%. And then when I go down to negative 100%, it will go to negative 100%. So, we duplicate this for the right wheel and then uh, for the omni wheel we keep it at zero okay this is remember for my up and down movement for my my left stick okay and then we spin all of our motors so spin my left mech, my right mech, and my omni wheel. And this code here just makes it so that uh, now my left position, my left controller's up and down axis, the y axis, uh, which is the number three position, is now fully coded. Okay, but now I need to add. Uh, the number four position, which is the left and right of my of my left axis. And what I want to do here is that when I tilt it to the left, we want to move our whole robot to the left, not turn it. We want to shift it all to the left. And then when I move it to the right, it, the whole robot shifts to the right or strafes to the right. So how do I do that? Well, I got to visualize when I'm moving to the right, that means that the number four position is moving into a positive direction. So when the positive direction is, um, is happening on that, uh, on that stick, we need to move our wheels um, in, in the positive direction as well, in which case we add that, um, that direction to the positive wheel spin, or if we need to move negative, then we decrease it by that, by that direction, okay? So we're going to go into operators and for my left wheel, when I move to the positive direction, I actually need to move the left wheel to the positive. So I need to go add the controller for position. Okay. That's because when I'm moving to the right, my left wheel is actually moving forward. Okay. But for my right wheel, I need to be moving backwards. So I'm going to decrease the number four position. Oops. Like that. Okay. What about my omnidirection? So I need to be also moving to the negative uh, to which is moving to the right when I am trying to um, uh, move to the right with the whole robot. So I'm going to have a negative sign here. Minus controller for position. Okay. So that means that now I have the control all set for my left stick. 
Now to add the right stick. So for the right stick, I want to make it so that when I tilt to the to the left, I turn the robot to the left, and then when I tilt it to the right, I turn the robot to the right. So now I just need to add or remove the um, the X position, which is the number one position on the right stick. So if I need to turn to the right, my left wheel is actually moving forward. So I'm going to go uh, add another positive block. And then I add my number one controller position. Okay. Like that. <clears throat> um, for the other wheel, it is the, the opposite. So I have to go negative minus the controller position. And then for the Omni wheel, we have to add the positive position because when we're turning, it's the opposite of strafing, right? When, when we're strafing, the back wheel actually turns, um, uh, spins to compensate for the turn and then forces the whole robot to shift to the side. But if we work against that angle, then it's going to spin on the spot. So here, we're going to add another positive. For the controller one position. Okay, and that's it. It's uh, really, really simple to, to code. I think if if you didn't understand it the first time around, you might have to watch watch the replay uh, a few times. But uh, I also have an X Drive coding tutorial uh, over here. So if you if you check that out, um, uh, that might give you a little bit more insight into how to program these holonomic drives as well. Uh, I also do the same thing for Vex IQ in case you are coming in from the Vex IQ side of things. Um, what are you going to find here that you might want to improve? Well. Uh, what I find in testing is that sometimes the Omni wheel is moving too much or not enough, uh, in which case you might want to put in a variable and a multiplier uh, to make it so that um, it decreases or increases the effect of your controller one position. Or you can make it so that uh, you put in a multiplier just for the Omni wheels spin. So uh, it's up to you and your software team as to how you want to compensate for oversteering or understeering. But yeah, that is the Y drive. I hope you all had fun today. I sure did. And I will see you all again next time. Bye bye.